Hey, what's up guys? Coach Jesse Mitchell with Get Handles Basketball. Today I'm gonna show you how to never lose the basketball again when you're dribbling. I'm gonna give you some dribbling tips that will help you see some instant improvements today. Before we jump into it, click that subscribe button and get on that notification squad. If there's any other parts of your game you wanna improve, make sure you check out my channel. I probably got a video on it already, but if I don't, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get you a video for it ASAP. Throughout this video, I'm gonna cover the five main things that most players have issues with. We're gonna talk about, first of all, mechanics, making sure you have those right. We're gonna talk about dealing with issues with like different Different types of basketballs, different courts, dead spots, flat basketballs, hitting your legs when you're dribbling, and a whole bunch more. So stay tuned to the entire video. Pretty much any issue you have with losing the basketball, we've got you covered in this. Let's get into the mechanics. The first thing, and this is a big issue with a lot of players, is how they're dribbling the basketball as far as their hands go. You don't want to be slapping the basketball like this. You want to be using your fingers, okay? A lot of play people say fingertips. It's not actually like the tips of your fingers. You want to be using the pads of your fingers, the ends of your fingers to control the basketball. Some people say your palms should never touch the basketball. I disagree on that. I'm not saying it should, but I'm saying if it does, it's not the end of the world. As long as you're controlling it with the ends of your fingers here and getting a good grip on the basketball and pushing the basketball into the ground. Other thing you want to pay attention to, and we're going to get into this more later, is a high ball and hand time. So that basically means try to have your hand on the basketball for as much of the dribble motion as possible, right? If you're slapping it almost the entire motion, your hand is not on the basketball, right? Make sure you got a good grip on it and that you're pushing the basketball, not slapping it. I'll have a link down below though. If you want to take your grip to the next level, there's a video down there that I'll link you to that shows you how to improve your grip on the basketball. So you can actually possibly palm it even if you're really young. I actually got a 12 year old with small, compared to me anyways, small hands, palming a basketball somewhat consistently. So if you can get that kind of a grip over the basketball, you're going to feel much more of a control over everything you do. It's going to feel much more comfortable, precise. And when it comes in your hand from a dribble, you're that much less likely to lose it. Now the other thing you want to pay attention to when the basketball comes in your hand, notice how when it spins and it comes into my hand, it stops spinning, right? Every time it comes into my hand, I'm going to try to get that kind of a grip on the basketball. Everything happening with your hands is huge. The way you push the basketball and then when it comes into your hand, trying to grip it as quick as possible, getting a nice tight grip on it, staying a little more loose with the rest of your body. With your hands, you want to get a good firm grip on the basketball the second it touches your hand, you're less likely to lose it when you're doing that consistently. Put this tip into your game today and you'll see an instant improvement. Okay, we're gonna get into some of the more specific things like the ball hitting your legs or getting out of control or different basketballs, different court surfaces in the next tip. But we gotta cover one last thing with our stance and our mechanics and it's our stance. You wanna try to, for the most part, make sure your butt is down and your feet are a little bit more than shoulder width apart, either in a squat stance or a lunge stance when you're dribbling the basketball or it could be somewhere kind of in between there, right? Not completely a squat or a lunge, which would be what I call the split squat stance. When you're in those positions, number one, it's going to be easier to move and react on the court. But as far as losing the basketball, what it's going to do is it's going to bring your hands lower to the ground. Remember how we talked about you want to try to have a high ball in hand time. So the basketball is in your hand for as long of a period as possible when you're dribbling, right? If I'm upright, look where my hand is at the lowest point. There's all this space here where my hand isn't touching the basketball. It physically cannot, unless I get my butt down. And again, even if I get my butt down here, I can only get it so low if I have my feet close together. But if I bring my feet out, now that drops my hand down, right? Notice here versus here, it comes down a couple extra inches. So that allows me to have a higher ball in hand time. So as the basketball is coming up into my hand, my hand is catching it lower to the ground so I can grip it much more easily. Plus, I'm directing it more closely into the ground exactly where I want it to go. Now, everything is much more controlled, so I'm not gonna lose it nearly as much. Just by getting my stance a little bit lower, getting my feet a little bit wider. Simple tip again, you can put into your game today, make an instant improvement. Okay, the next two tips I'm gonna give you are gonna talk about more when you're on the move and pushing the basketball more out and making sure you're not hitting your leg or just losing control. So this first one we're gonna talk about just losing control of it so the ball just goes flying. When you're doing your moves when you're on the run, a lot of times you might feel like you need to push the basketball out you know, more forward to cover some ground, right? If there's open space, you don't wanna do this obviously if there's a defender right in front of you, but if you got space to work with, you wanna push it out a little further, right? Maybe when you're starting off, when you do that, the ball gets too far away from you and then it goes out of bounds. Obviously that's not something you want to happen. One little tweak that you can put into your game that will make this happen a lot less, in fact, probably never have that happen again, is to just flick your wrist more down at the end. So notice how my fingers point down or even curl slightly back towards me. So that way I can extend my arm to push the ball out, but at the very end, I'm 
directing it down so the ball doesn't just keep going flying so far that it can't get to it. Same with your crossovers on more of your push crossovers, right? You would use that same motion and then switch hands so you can still extend it out, cover some ground with your feet, but the ball doesn't go flying so far that you can't get back to it. Simple tweak, put that in your game. You'll notice a big difference with that. Let's talk about dealing with the basketball hitting your feet and your legs. There's a couple different ways this can happen. Real quick, hit that like button if you're digging the video so far though. Let's talk first of all when you're on the move, running. If you're doing your move, let's say you're just doing a regular dribble towards the basket. Again, we talked about how you want to extend it out. That last tip I give you will help a lot, right? Because if you, if you try to dribble the basketball more straight down, it gets right here where you could hit your knee, your leg, your foot, any of that, right? Again, make sure you're extending your arm out and then flicking your wrist at the last second. That puts it in a space where you're not gonna hit the basketball with your feet or even with more of that push or throw type crossover. That'll help with that. But let's say there's a situation where there's a defender here, but you still really need to cover some ground coming forward and you don't wanna put the ball out here where they can steal it, right? What are you gonna do? In those instances, try to keep it more behind you. That might take a little while to get the feel for, but the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Don't try to dribble it right in front of you. Dribble it to the side or behind you while you're on the move. That way, you won't be running into your feet with the basketball and you'll have protection over the basketball from your defender. But let's talk more about like crossovers. A lot of times even, you know, from doing a jab into a crossover, you know, selling a fake, things like that. Or if you're running and making a change of direction, you might hit your feet on those situations as well. How do you fix that? It's really simple. When you're doing a crossover, typically what's gonna happen is you wanna plant your foot first. Make sure you do that and then you know exactly where your feet are. Your body will have the natural ability to push it in a space where your feet aren't. What ends up happening where a lot of players start hitting their feet is when they're crossing over before they've completely got this foot planted and now it hits off their knee. Or they plant this foot, they cross over and they start moving this foot forward and now you hit your knee or your foot again. Make sure you get your feet planted for a brief second, push the ball, and then go. That's key. And then the other thing you wanna pay attention to is just making sure you got the placement right. When you're doing that crossover, you're putting it in a space here where your feet aren't. But if you get your feet planted, that'll be pretty easy to do. The problem with most players is they start moving their feet too quick. That's pretty much it. The other thing I can give you for a tip for this is, especially with these crossover type moves, when you're practicing, if you're, if you're always hitting your feet, look down. A lot of coaches say to never look down, but you can't understand what's happening, where the problems are coming if you don't. Now, once you get the repetitions in and get figured out, okay, I'm moving this foot too soon, or you notice, I'm pushing the basketball back too far towards this foot, right? You learn that from looking down. Then when you get it down, rep it out, rep it out, rep it out. Now you know how to do it. Get your head back up, simple enough. Take some time to rep it out with your head down. And then when you get better, get the head up. Now, if you wanna take this kind of a thing next level, click the top link in the description down below. That workout will help you a ton with this type of a situation with your on the move handles, planting your feet, getting that timing down, and also having more of that extend and tight type of handle, being able to handle both types of situations. Just click that link, pop in your email. I'll send that to you instantly for free. Okay, second to last tip. I got a bonus tip for you after this that'll help you a ton. Let's talk about dealing with different types of basketballs, different types of court surfaces, all that. First of all, if you're getting your mechanics right with your stance, having a high ball in hand time, gripping the basketball, working on your positioning and placement, all the things we've talked about before, that'll make those things much less of an issue. Quick example would be like, if you're on a court where, you know, there's dead spots or there, you know, maybe the basketball is more flat or has less grip that's not gonna be as much of an issue because let's say there's a dead spot here and the ball doesn't bounce up as high as you expect it if your hands up here waiting for the basketball because you don't have a high ball in hand time and it doesn't come up to this hand you're gonna lose the basketball right or it'll come flying maybe instead of where it should be coming up here it'll probably if it's a dead spot or the basketball's flat come more over here right but if your hands down here it doesn't matter because your hands there waiting right and if you get that grip you can quickly make that reaction to those situations so let's give you some different tips to start dealing with this i like to take all kinds of different basketballs and practice with them different types of material basketballs worn out basketballs over inflated basketballs under inflated basketballs I try to get out and play on some blacktop. I try to get to play out on all kinds of different court surfaces inside, whether it's a rubber court or a tile court, a hardwood court. So that way, the more I play in these different situations, I can make those adjustments more quickly. And also, I'll use like the plastic bag trick or playing with ski gloves. If you wanna see more about that, I'll have a link in the description down below. It's Kyrie Irving's weird handles drill. That'll take you really in depth to this sort of thing. That's another way to start getting used to new basketballs, different court surfaces, and not have it bother you as much. The more you start 
start doing that, it'll be much easier for you to quickly adapt to different court surfaces because you're doing it all the time. You learn how to make those adjustments more quickly. That's like a certain little like skill that most people wouldn't think of. But if you can do this, that's gonna give you an advantage over the competition just by making it a part of your practice. Simple enough, but something that will help you a ton. Last tip I got for you, and it's pretty much the cold hard truth. You need to get in practice, but not just any practice. You need to get in good practice. And getting in lots of repetitions of that good practice is the best way to make sure you stop losing the basketball. If you want the best way to do that, click the top link in the description down below. That's my Defender Destroyer workout. That'll help you really boost your ball control quickly so you stop losing it in games. Just click that top link, pop in your email, I'll send that to you instantly for free. Also, if you found this video helpful, make sure you click that like button if you haven't yet. Click that subscribe button. And if there's something you wanna see from the channel that I haven't covered on my channel already, make sure you check it out to make sure I did it. But if there is something, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to get you a video ASAP. And make sure you check out this video on this playlist. You'll probably like those as well. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more and make moves today.